It's not just the 1st of April, a heartening date and the long yearning for spring, but it is a holiday of sorts. You just heard me ranting about April Fool as being an overrated day, but it can be a special day for some, particularly those with a talent for pulling off a good ruse. It's a day with murky origins, celebrated by the playing of tricks. Pranksters have carte blanche. Some take it to the extreme, but the ability to fool friends, co-workers, and loved ones doesn't come naturally to everyone. It's not always easy to keep a straight face while telling your son that the school is just called to say his exam results have been lost and that he'll have to repeat the school year. It's not easy to tell dad that your exam results have been lost and that you'll have to repeat the school year. So for the less practiced fools amongst us, we've brought in an expert, someone educated in the fine art of keeping a straight face no matter how awkward the situation. In fact, he may be the most socially awkward man in Canadian journalism. His Nathan on your side segments are a lethal combination of sharp wit and really, really dull delivery. The perfect combination for Q's very own April Fool's Day correspondent, Nathan Fielder, joins me live in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Hello. Very good to have you here. <clears throat> it's uh, great to be here. Uh, let me get right to this, Nathan. The rule on April Fool's Day is that the prank must happen before noon. I mean, I don't know where these rules are written, but that's you know that's sort yeah. of what we've always gone with. So you, do you have some suggestions for quick gags our listeners can pull off in the next two hours? Yeah, well, like your, your producer, um, I guess, emailed me and told me to think of some some pranks yes that that people can pull yeah and i i i have one um, okay uh so okay so this is how it has to happen okay um <laughs> you have to kind of if you're in an office i'm assuming most people work in an office sure some people okay yeah, yeah. so then okay you pick the coworker that right. you want to like prank okay, okay. yeah and um y- you wait to, oh yeah you're gonna need a bag of marbles for this okay so the, I actually there's resources involved yeah, yeah. so I, I brought a bag of marble so just <laughs> okay, to, just yeah. to describe yeah, so you can yeah. see how it goes so you okay you, you first you acquire it's like a recipe you have to get the so you, you need get to get marbles bag of marbles yeah i got these at honest eds yeah. but you, you had those them. in your pocket that's pretty good yeah yeah well right. I, where else am i gonna yeah. yeah um okay so then you take you wait till your coworker goes like to the washroom or something and <laughs> right. then you know okay right. he's gone you right know. And then you take the bag of marbles yeah. and you put it on his desk, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So then he's he comes back from the washroom, yes, right? The, your coworker. Yeah. And he sees the marbles on his desk. Yes. And he's like, you know, why are there marbles on my desk? Right. I didn't leave marbles there. <laughs> uh, uh, right. And then you can come out and be like, April Fools. <laughs> right. But, yeah. So that's the prank? Yeah, he 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 he'll did, come he he'll come back and he'll what? be like, I didn't leave marbles on my desk, and then he'll see marbles there and he'll be like, what, you know? Right, he's yeah, he's pranked then, yeah. Well, yeah, because because he, he didn't, didn't he didn't expect right. marbles, <laughs> like he expected the desk how he left it, but then when he sees the bag of marbles, he'll right. be confused. Right. But you don't want to. I mean, you don't want to. You just then you come out and be like, yeah, April because you don't Fools. want it to go too far. Or you don't yeah. want it, it to like ruin his day, you know. You have to, you come <laughs> right. out and say it, so he right. knows it's a right. prank. Kind of like, but but yeah. it, it it doesn't seem like a particularly uh, a difficult prank in terms of the fact that the prankee your no co-worker, anyone can do it. Yeah. No, but I mean he's. N- <laughs> uh, it's, it's you just need a bag of marbles. Anyone. Right. Can, yeah. But but no one gets and nobody no one gets hurt emotionally. No, and if you're worried, actually, I was thinking about it. You could actually probably use a bag of like candy. Like right. M and M's, so then, you know, I'm thinking you could actually use a bag of anything. Maybe. No, but if you use a bag of candy, yeah. Then after, when you're like April Fools, and he's like, "Oh, okay, it, it was a <laughs> prank," then then you can be like, and you can have the candy, right. and then so it'll be like, "Oh, right," like you know, a plus, and his and he'll, it'll make his day. <laughs> like, right, that's excellent. Yeah, it's, and uh, it seems really easy to really easy to execute. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you just have to wait till he goes away and to you the washroom. It. And during the yeah. time, like during it, when he notices it, he, if he looks over at you, you, you try like not to smile right away. Right, and then, right. And then maybe oh, after right. three or four seconds, you can be like, okay, that's yeah, an April yeah, Fool's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are marbles that I put on your desk. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, yeah, that's that's remarkable. I I I would imagine pulling off one of your gags on this hour is quite similar to April Fool's. Uh, how, how do you prepare? 
for a gag interview. I've been watching uh, your stuff on on well, I've been watching it on twenty two minutes, but it, I was watching on YouTube the, this uh, this interview you did with Federal Finance Minister uh, Jim Flaherty. Um, and he, you don't appear to have any questions for him, but you maintain a straight face, even as he's kind of flailing about and, and, and laughing. Uh, how difficult is that for you to do, Nathan Fielder? Um, well, Gian Gomeshi. Yes, Nathan um, Fielder. <laughs> um, it's actually, I mean, the thing is, the show This Hour is 22 Minutes has been around for like, I think... This was, it's going into its 17th season next year. Right. So everyone kind of knows the show and knows, you know, that they're on it and stuff. But I think I just am like, or have been, I've been getting better, but like genuinely uncomfortable in like conversations. Right. Like you're quite good at like, you know, keeping a dialogue going and making it all com- comfortable and Thank stuff. You. Yes. Hey, you're welcome. But like Nathan Fielder, it's always uh, for me. It's not always um, easy. So I just kind of just do that, and then s- for some reason, people laugh when they see it on camera. I, I exaggerated <laughs> a bit. And so I, you're telling me that your your the career trajectory has has been from socially awkward guy to socially awkward on camera famous comedian now. Yeah, it was interesting. Sometimes in the earlier things that I was doing, I would it when it would go in front of an audience, I I would uh wonder why people laughed at a certain thing because right. I didn't see it as a joke. I just saw that as like how I was acting. And then I, but through doing a lot of that, I think I've gotten better. Like this is a pretty good conversation. I think, I think we're doing really yeah. well. Yeah. And and with great tips about the bag of marbles you which you even brought. I was thinking, uh, actually, you could have explained the the prank without even bringing the bag of marbles. I think I would have still understood it. Um, yeah, but uh, it's it's. I mean, it, you try and describe things in the clearest way possible. Sure. So having yeah. a visual, Bri- like the marbles. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it it seems like what you're doing on Twenty Two Minutes is improv. Uh, so, but you, when you're about to punk or or interview the federal finance minister do your do you prep much do your producers sort of do you talk about what you're going to do or or do you just get um, out there and do nathan fielder nathan fielder um you know mark farrell's the executive producer of the show and i usually tell him what i'm thinking of doing but the funniest stuff usually happens when it kind of something happens that you don't expect when you're just talking to people like they might say something that you're not expecting and then you just kind of converse in that direction and just follow their lead. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So in the case of Jim Flaherty, how much did you prepare? Oh, well, that one, I had never, like, a lot of the show is, like, ambush-type things where you go and, like, talk, and I had never done that. A lot of people (laughs) are, like, really good at that on the show, but I'm, like... You're pretty good at it. Well, I I get anxious uh, in those situations. Like, I'm not very, like, aggressive with the mic, and sometimes you have to be. So I, I was just kind of like, I'm just like Mark, the producer of the show, asked me to go do it because he was in town. It was yeah. a very last minute thing. And I was just like, uh, you OK, stopped. I'll go, but yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. He's, I like He probably will just walk right by me or whatever. <laughs> but he stopped. And then you didn't know what to do. Well, yeah. Like, I, I mean, I don't <laughs> know what to. At the, at the time, the economy wasn't as bad as it is now. I probably could have asked something about it then. But well, what is your sense of, of what we learn about the people you interview? The economy is really bad now. Yeah, the economy's gotten really bad. Holy. Yeah. Have you seen like the, the stock economy? market? Yeah, it's oh, t- tough times. Yeah. It's like yeah. red means down. Yeah, you keep looking over there. Yeah. Oh, their yeah. producers are there. Yeah, there's people on the other I side of like the class. I feel like I don't want to ignore yeah. them or anything. No, that's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> what do we learn? Now you're looking the other way. Is this yeah. so? This is being filmed for this is uh, uh, QTV. Yeah, we put the, then we do a television version of this, so people can look it up on the internet. They can also do that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's great. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a website <laughs> on the internet. Yeah, I got a couple more questions, and then yeah, we can, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I it's was NathanFielder dot com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do we learn about people who you interview while watching them deal with awkward silences that you're creating? Nathan Fielder. What do we learn about them? Yeah. Um, 
Well, I think the goal, and this is kind of what I've noticed. I think it's because of um, like my uh, my mom. I think it's my mom has like a way of kind of being very like um, smooth in conversation. Like she's very good at talking with people. So I think when I was younger, I always tried to like throw her a curveball that would make her feel uncomfortable and throw her off her guard, but also like try and make her laugh <laughs> because I felt like then kind of your true personality comes out when right. you have to deal with something that you don't really expect. So um, I think maybe it stems from that. Um, and so when I talk to people or basically do it on the show, people have a standard way of talking in interviews. It's very like comfortable and technical. But then I think if you try and move into a personal area or throw in something that they maybe don't expect, maybe their real personality comes out and then it's, you you like them and stuff. It's like endearing to watch. <laughs> is and stuff. Is there a line? <laughs> is there a line for you? I mean, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen as Ali G or Borat has pushed the awkward squirm to the extreme. Uh, some say too far in some cases. Where do you draw the line in terms of the kind of gag you would never pull or uh, out of sympathy for the quote unquote victim? Well, yeah, I, I guess I don't really see it that way. I mean, I don't really see it as like a gag because everyone who's on the show knows this is this hour is twenty two minutes. People know the show. People can look up my stuff on the internet, like right before I come in to do an interview. So, I mean, they're very aware of that it's a comedy show and stuff. So I don't think there's any real, like, deception. I just think sometimes there's, like, things that people don't know how to discuss or get confused about right. naturally in conversation. They always know? I feel like a lot of the things that happen, like, also, like could happen in a regular, like, news interview. Right. But they, like, I find the news pretty funny. Do you? Yeah. Even in this terrible econo economic time you've been talking about? There's a news show in uh, Halifax called Live at Five, which is just <laughs> unreal. It's so great. Why is it so funny? Um, I don't know. I just really like the personalities of all the reporters, and I was watching that a lot out there. I, I thought it was really charming, and um, people are trying to do their best. <laughs> To fill an hour with uh, um, virtually no news. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I, I want to come back to April Fool's Day. Yes, please. If that's okay, because I was worried that we were viewing. Off you're course. our April Fool's Day correspondent. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you brought in the bag of marbles, yeah. for example. Yeah. To give an example. Mm -hmm. I uh, want to stress: make sure you do say April Fools after you do it, so they know it's a prank. <laughs> right. 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 So there's there's a, some sort of explanation. Yeah. Have the tables ever been turned on you? Have you ever been a, the victim of a, an April Fools Day con? Well, <clears throat> I don't remember for sure if it was April Fools Day, but my dad like pulled a prank on me once, but. And it was very embarrassing. Well, he, uh, I was in grade eight at the time, and um, he convinced me that uh, the CEO of the company that he worked for was uh, four years old. <laughs> and like, obviously, at first I didn't believe it, but he like was relentless. Like, it, this went on for like months. Right. Like every Mon day. It was a long April Fool's joke. Yeah. yeah. Like. Every I'm not sure if this is an example of an April Fool's Day joke. Well, he 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 basically like at first I didn't believe it, but he'd come back and be like, "Oh yeah, like you know the boss made like a speech today, and he like made a joke about how he preferred like recess to like these like speeches, and no one knew whether to laugh or not. Like he had it like so detailed <laughs> right, right. to the point where any and my mom and my sister like they didn't believe him, but they got in on it against right, me. Right. I'm like so gullible. So uh, how? After a while, you believed. That I was his... telling my friends at school. I was like, "No, trust me, trust me. It's right. for real. I can't believe it either." And then eventually, he was like, "No, oh, I was just joking." And I was so mad. Right. Months later, like he kept it going for I'd say at least like three weeks to a month. Right. It was a while. I so it's really not an April Fool's Day joke. Um. Did it even start on April Fool's Day? I don't. I don't remember. It's so long. <laughs> How did you remember a lot of grade eight? Well, some of it. I, yeah. I was, yeah, I'm, that's okay. I mean, I, I, I was asking for an example. It was of a good one, though. Yeah, but it's a good prank overall. My dad's really funny. <laughs> so is my mom, I, too, Your mom's a good conversationalist. A yeah, well. she's very good with people. Uh, anything special planned my for today? My sister's great, too. Do you, do, you, do you have anything special planned for today? Um, is it a holiday for you, April Fool's Day? 
Halifax. Yeah, well, I, I just got back to Toronto. I was in Halifax doing the show, and the show just wrapped. So um, I bought some new shelves mm-hmm. from Honest Ed's as well Yeah. Uh, when I got the marbles. So <laughs> I, uh, I've been trying to organize my room because there's a lot of clutter in there. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's, that, that, that's a, a, a task for today. Yeah, well, keep I all mean, your marbles together. We do these little things, I guess, to to fill our time, and you set little goals, and um, I guess that's what makes life exciting. Nathan Fielder, thanks for uh, thanks for coming in today. Thank you, appreciate it. But I should mention your your website. I think you might have mentioned it already. Oh yes, Na- yes, NathanFielder dot com. It's uh, www dot NathanFielder dot com, and there's <laughs> yes. a bunch of stuff up there that's great to watch. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan Fielder, comedian, April Fool's expert, uh, joining me here in Studio Q. Of course, he continues to make regular appearances on This Hour Has Twenty Two Minutes.